Zanzibar, there is at least one man and one monkey who get together every day. The man is Shahabani Ali Hassan, and the monkey is the red colobus, a rare and wild species which has lived here, cut off from the continent for 15,000 years. Zanzibar's tropical forest was too much of a temptation for man, and only a few hectares of it now remain in the Jozani Reserve. It is here that the last red colobus monkeys are protected and where Shabani works as a guide, accompanying visitors from all over the world, anxious to see this surprising little animal. Welcome into the place where monkeys are. So Jozani is a protected homes of the endangered red colobus monkeys, which is only found in Zanzibar. Kima Ponju, or poison monkey, the name given to him here in Zanzibar because he destroys leaves, trees, and harvests, almost disappeared a few years ago, a victim of his reputation and also because of the loss of his natural habitat, the forest. Josani refers to close the crown forest. Now it is conservation area. Shabani, who spends time with the red colobus every day, is aware of how its presence has directly contributed to the welfare of the villages attached to the reserve. To see them, the government charges an admission fee of a few shillings. This money is redistributed to the area's villagers to help them. In Swahili, we call it Jimbi Mwitu, Jimbi Mwitu. In addition to monkeys, there are also forest plants. This one relieves headaches, stomach aches, intestinal problems, and also helps future mothers to give birth. Also, um, this one here. There's the michikichi, the palm whose seeds, once crushed, provide an excellent cooking oil and whose highly resistant leaf fibers are used to make rope. Yeah, especially like this. Also, hair rasta. <laughs> you see, like this. Then it like hundred meters. Shabani confirms the fact that the Michikichi seeds are very much appreciated by the red colobus monkey. It's see the big like this. Colobus monkeys like young leaves, like here. You know. Also, they eat a stalk. They eat a young bugs. Also, they eat nuts. So that's why I can say Indian almond trees the favor food of the colobus monkeys. But also they eat more than 50 different kind of trees, including stinging nettles. They eat all sorts of young sprouts, flowers, seeds or fruit, provided that the plant or the fruit is green, because this ruminant little monkey cannot digest sugar. He can take in huge quantities of vegetation thanks to his stomach, which has a number of sacs. And so, from sack to sack, his stomach decomposes the nourishment with bacteria, which remain active by eating regularly all day long. It's quite a production to ruminate on a daily basis. This activity can also be devastating in a forest which is getting smaller and smaller, and a monkey population which is getting larger and larger. Here, for example, is a tree particularly frequented and appreciated by colobus monkeys. The destruction is very impressive. That is the Mangifera indica, means mango trees. So the colob that tree have been, has been eaten by the colobus monkeys and now is going to die. <laughs> Aji Mjoza is not very happy, and in his palm grove just on the edge of the reserve, he receives the visit of a government agent who will witness the damage a group of colobus monkeys has just caused. 
A curse on these monkeys. Before, at least all they ate were these wild leaves, but their tastes have developed and now they attack all the plantations. They eat the coconuts, greens, and even the flowers. Yes. That is why they're called poison monkeys. They've earned their reputation, too. In a few hours, the monkeys destroyed almost all of his future harvest. It takes a lot of patience to explain that this damage will be reimbursed, thanks to the money paid by tourists who come to see the colobus monkeys. Aji Mjoza is lucky that his land is near the reserve. This makes him eligible for compensation. For villages a little further away, however, the problem has still not been resolved. The mission of these forest wardens is to watch over the entire reserve area. Shaobani knows them well and informs them that this morning he saw a group of colobus monkeys straying from the reserve. He asks them to check that the group isn't heading for the coast towards the crops near his village. The guards don't like to patrol outside of the forest, but they decide to make an effort for Shahabani. They're now heading for Charawe, his village, towards the mangrove and the coast. Zanzibar is a plateau of coral with no relief, and so viewing spots are rare. The guards, however, know the area well and can detect the slightest movement in the thick vegetation. Nothing seems to be moving, though. Maybe they're already at the mangrove. Where could the colobus monkeys have gone? The best way to find out what's become of them is to make a head count. Ali Abdul Rahim is an officer responsible for wildlife in Zanzibar and in Tanzania. He's asked Shahabani to accompany him since he especially appreciates Shahabani's knowledge of the terrain and the animals. He and a few assistants come here regularly to observe the colobus's movements and to count the number of families. The colobus is a very social animal, and each group of 30 or so individuals includes one to four males, the females, and their young. Taking account is a meticulous job, and it requires lots of legwork to find each individual group and count up its members. Another one. Shahabani, who knows almost all of them, is a tremendous help. A few years ago, to facilitate the task, more than 60 adult colobus monkeys belonging to different groups were captured. After anesthetizing them, they underwent some tests and then were marked with different color collars, according to group. But it's not always easy to find them. All of Shahabani's experience is needed to spot the adults, those which are marked, and the others, their offspring. Twenty years ago, threatened with extinction, there were only about 500 left on the island. Today, there are five times that number, and the majority of them are on the reserve, or just around it. (laughs) 
Charawe, Shabani's village, is only half an hour by bicycle from the reserve. A thousand people live without electricity on agriculture, craft work, and a bit of fishing. <laughs> Traditional ties within the community are very strong. <laughs> Shahabani participates regularly in village committee meetings. This small local assembly, in cooperation with the government, brings together farmers and villagers concerned with development. Today's discussion subject is red colobus monkeys. <laughs> There are more monkeys than people, and they cause a lot of damage. It's all right to protect them, but they have to stay at Jozani. If they come here, we'll have to get rid of them. What else can we do? I'm a small farmer and the monkeys ate my whole crop. If I don't get compensation, I tell you the monkeys will have to be killed. We have to assume our responsibility, and I say that if we can't have compensation, the village committee has to start thinking about the idea of regulating the number of colobus monkeys. Like his village neighbors, Shahabani has begun planting crops to supplement his income. With the help of his family, he's decided to plant a banana orchard. It's a thankless job since it's not easy to make holes in the coral. But the first bananas will be harvested nine months from now. And there's no danger from the poison monkey. They eat all green fruit, except bananas. He's got to work fast since it's the beginning of the rainy season, and the banana stalks don't like being planted in the water. The rain has been so long in coming, it's practically a blessing. The monkeys don't look very enthusiastic. And yet the Procolobus kirki, or red colobus monkey of Zanzibar, has been through the masikas, or rainy season, brought on by the Indian Ocean winds so many times. The colobus never seems to get used to it. In the village, once everyone has arrived home, it's not advisable to go out again, since beginning with April and through May, downpours can go on for days at a time. In Zanzibar, in all seasons, the days are rhythmed by Muslim prayer. Shahabani has studied the Quran, which gives meaning to his life as a guide, his knowledge of monkeys and the forest, of agriculture, fishing, his fellow villagers, and simply his life as a man. <laughs> He has become a sheikh, a spiritual Muslim chief, in order to teach the sacred text to the children of his village and 
help them to understand, for example, that Allah sent water down from the heavens to drink and to water the plants that feed the herds, and that this water will help all plants and fruit to grow. And that God is the master of the day, the night, and the stars, and that in Zanzibar, like everywhere else, we must recognize this in Him. Since becoming, in his own way, guardian of the last forest in Zanzibar, and thanks to his new profession, Shahabani has begun to build his house and start a family. He and his wife, Pili Katibu, hope to have lots of children. And before the day he goes to what he calls Allah's paradise, Shahabani hopes to see his children and his future children grow up under his roof, all ten of them. In the nearby mangrove, bathed every day by the tide, the colobus monkey sometimes returns, but this is more and more rare. Ever since they have been officially protected, the hungry little monkeys prefer the reserve and the adjacent crops. Nowadays, the mangrove is more interesting for Shahabani and the other villagers than it is for the monkeys. It still provides a large quantity of wood, especially the hard and resistant kind called pulse here, which is considered the best wood on the island for carpentry. In the bay at the end of the mangrove, facing the village, fishing is a perfect way to balance the day's activities. <laughs> For generations, the villagers have maintained wooden picket barriers across the bay. And using nets, they trap schools of fish, which are swept down by the movement of the tide. Shahabani, far from the monkeys here, often comes to the bay to help his fishermen friends. And up to now, nobody has ever gone home empty-handed. In the heart of the Josani Reserve, the large road through the forest was also a threat to the colobus. A metal ladder stretched between the trees around it was installed, but it was always ignored by our acrobatic friends. The red colobus monkeys, oblivious to the danger, were being decimated by the traffic. Thanks to speed limit signs and speed bumps, the danger has diminished and the Zanzibarites, required to slow down around Josani, take advantage of this to stop and to observe the little monkeys which have become more and more familiar to them. There is even a group of colobus monkeys who have made the edge of the road its home. And they become more and more sure of themselves. Monkey, come, come, come. Take it. Okay. Monkey, monkey, monkey. 
In addition to being lovers of shoots and fruit, which are green and therefore toxic, the colobus also adores charcoal, so much so that he goes into the village Monkey. to steal some. Take it. Monkey. And when we ask Shahabani why, he says that because charcoal, which is also an effective remedy for humans, enables the monkeys to absorb the toxins of all green plants they eat throughout the day. Take it. Monkey. And Shahabani, who often observes them eating, wants to check it out. Today, the monkeys don't seem very interested. Probably because they're too busy eating. Monkey. Monkey, monkey. Monkey. But now that they're finished, we can see what they like for dessert. Shahabani respects the rules and keeps his distance from the monkey, who is still a wild animal. He does so to avoid being bitten, and especially so as not to transmit any infectious diseases. They are wonderful monkeys, you know. I can say they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are cute. They are very, very interesting to watch them. I can say they are cheeky, cheeky, cheeky monkeys, you know. And I think that's what we have for this moment. Please keep watching. meeting, you see them, just there. Previously threatened, presently protected, the red colobus monkey of Zanzibar, which can live up to 20 or 30 years, is perhaps in the process of destroying the few remaining hectares of forest on his island of refuge, as well as the crops around it. And so the problem of regulating his existence will soon be essential. In the meantime, Shahabani the guide and the red colobus monkey get together every day.